Hello there, I hope you are doing well wherever you are watching me from. This is Mwale Mundolo. So once again, uh, I want us to go through this uh, physics paper 5, 0645. Uh, that is uh, February, March 2015, question number 2. It's about uh, the lens, how a lens work, how the lens forms an image on a screen. So as I always mentioned, if you watched my videos about the practical, how to do a physics practical, what I always mention is that uh, the very first thing, whenever you are given a question paper for practical, please go through the question paper, all of it, as you want to do for this particular question here. So, IGCC physics, it doesn't list down the practicals or the apparatus that you have been given. So the only way to confirm that you have all the apparatus is by reading through the question so that you don't ask the, you know uh, you don't ask for the operator once you are still doing the experiment you can um, you know interfere with your planning so I advise always go through the question paper so let's start so in this experiment you will determine the focal length of a converging lens that is the aim of uh, the experiment carry out the following instruction referring to the figure 2.1 so if you look at uh, this figure we have um, illuminated object for this case we'll be using a lamp uh, which is connected to a, a, a cells or a beta uh, we have a lens and a lens holder we have the screen so part a Roman one place the lens at a distance u1 which is 25.0 centimeter from the illuminated object move the screen until a sharp image of the object appears on the screen in bold, you are told, do not move the screen from this position for the remainder of the experiment. Very, very important. Roman 3, record the distance B1 between the lens and the screen. Uh, part B, calculate F1 using the formula or the equation below. Part C, keeping illuminated object and screen in the same position, move the lens towards the screen until a second sharp image uh, is seen on the screen. Record the new distance u2 between the limited object and the lens and the new distance v2 between the lens and the screen. So we have u2 and v2. Again, use the formula that is provided to calculate for f2. So we are confirming that we have everything. Uh, we have the screen uh, which is here. Uh, we have the illuminated object, so this will be our object, uh, the star uh, that is there. We will illuminate it. So the illuminated object, we are going to look using the, the bulb. And then we have our lens uh, like that. So we just want to follow the instruction as we have been told. So place the lens at a distance u1 is equal to 25. So u is, so sometimes please be careful. Uh, always refer to the diagram. Sometimes you may find that uh, the limited object is on this side and the speed is on this side. It doesn't matter. What will matter for you to change the screen, it depends on the light you may be in the UR room. Um, if it's too much light, you also want to change the screen uh, to fit to that. But uh, if everything is the way it is, then please just ensure that uh, u is the distance between the elevated object and the lens. Like for example, this side is where we have u, and this side is where we have v because there is a screen. v means the image distance. So the image distance that is the distance from the lens to the screen. u means the object distance. So the object distance is from the, where the object is to the lens. So we can never start all right so
I'm going to move my screen until I get a sharp image, excuse me, which is somewhere here. This is in blood. So remember V1, so that is 66.6 minus 25, so that gives us 41.6. Now, following the instructions that we have been given, we have been told not to move the screen now. So if you're not moving the screen, then uh, what are we supposed to do? So we don't move the screen, but now we displace. We move the lens slowly towards the screen until a second sharp image is formed. From the experiment that we have done, which you can able to refer to, so V1, uh, the position of the screen, the screen was at uh, 66, 66.6 centimeter. The lens was at 25.0 centimeter mark. 25.0 centimeter mark. That means that uh, V1 will be the difference between 66.6 minus 25.0, which will give us 41.6. And that is a uh, centimeter. <clears throat> So calculate the value F1 for the focal length of the lens using the values uh, from A, from the equation of so Remember U1 we have been given, which is uh, 25.0 centimeters. So our work is just substitute, then get our value. So for there, F1 will be U1. So that is uh, 25.0 times 41.6. Uh, so this is in centimeter, this is in centimeter. Uh, then we have 25.0 centimeter plus 41.0 centimeter. So you'll able to see clearly <clears throat> this will give us um, 15.6 centimeter. So centimeter times centimeter, that will be centimeter squared. And then denominator here will have centimeter, will cancel with one centimeter, and therefore our answer will be 15.6 centimeter. We are giving our answer uh, to three significant figure for two reasons. Number one, if you look at uh, the values of uh, U1 and U2, they are into three significant uh, figures. That is number one reason. Number two, the meter rule that we are using uh, measures up to de the degree of accuracy of the meter rule is up to 0 0.1 centimeter, meaning that uh, we expect our values to be up to one decimal place, not more. Part C, uh, the value of uh, U2 uh, was found to be 40.4 centimeter. The value of uh, V2 was found to be 26.2 uh, uh, centimeter. Again, once we have data, our work is just to analyze. So F2 from here will be U2 times V2. So that is 40.4 uh, centimeter times 26.2 centimeter divided by 
40.4 centimeter plus 26.2 centimeter. When we work out that, we get 15.89, which is approximately into three significant figures, that would be 15.9 centimeters. So F1 is 15.6 centimeter, F2 is 15.9 centimeter so that is analysis of that particular part there is a uh, part e of this question a student suggests that uh, u2 and b1 should be equal state whether your findings support this suggestion justify your statement by reference to your results so please this is the point whereby even if your values don't make sense but you will get a full mark here depending on how you make your conclusion or justification. So let's see, our value for U2, so U2 is 40.4 centimeter, and we can refer up there, uh, V1 is uh, 41. So V1 is 41.6 centimeter. Now, I understand you can able to see clearly here, uh, these values are not exactly the same. But that is not how we make conclusion in experiment. In experiment, even if even if V1 was supposed to be equal to U2, so please note that uh, in the experiment, you may not be able to get the exact uh, value. Like you can't expect that it is 20 here and 20 this side. That expectation may not, but then there's uh, some kind of um, allowance for errors or inaccuracy in any experiment that we do. So what you understand is that uh, suppose the percentage difference, suppose the percentage difference between V1 and U2 is less than 10%. If the percentage difference between them is less than 10%, then we will confirm that indeed U, v, V1 and U2 are equal. But if the percentage difference is greater than 10%, then we conclude that they are not true, even if theoretically, you think that they should be true. So this is the point that uh, you don't bring theory here, you use your values. So let's look at um, this. So we will have a difference that is uh, 41.6 minus 40.4 divided by the least value, the smallest value. So the small value is uh, 40.4, and whatever you get, you multiply by 100, 100%. This gives us uh, a value of uh, about 2.4. Let me just confirm 2.9%, which is less than 10%. Uh, so if that is the case, then now uh, our statement here, we are going to confirm the suggestion. We are going to say that uh, V1 is equal to uh, to U, U2, as it was suggested. And what is the just justification? We can able to mention that the percentage difference, of course, we expect this in a word, percentage difference percentage difference between between U2 and V1 is within is within the limit of of experimental accuracy so this word all this statement is very, very important. So you need to always end. The moment you need to do a justification, you must end with this particular part here. Let's say the percentage difference was more than 10%. Then our conclusion here could be that the percentage difference between U2 and V1, instead of the within, now we just mention it that it is beyond. It is beyond the limit of experimental accuracy. So in that case, you will uh, not support the suggestion. But for this case, uh, this our data support. So you need to do the calculation first before you conclude. Describe two precautions you took in order to obtain reliable results in this experiment. So the first thing that uh, you need to know is that, um, of course, the lens, the lens, uh, the screen, uh, the lens, the screen, and even the object uh, were perpendicular, were perpendicular 
to the table. In other words, the table was flat. Uh, that is uh, a point. So I tried also to ensure that uh, the lens and the object were at the same height, were at the same height above the table or the bench that I was uh, using. So there are more points which you can able to check. So now uh, what I want us to do is uh, to check if we are within the expectation according to the to the marking scheme. So according to the guideline or marking scheme, you can able to see here that uh, we are advised that uh, V1 should be between uh, 34 and 41.0 centimeter. Ours has passed by 0.6. Uh, centimeter, so we may get one mark for that. Uh, for part B, we expect the value of uh, F1 should be between 14 to 16. So when I do my calculations, I uh, think uh, that is a full mark, so it's within the, the range. Then uh, V2, so V2 is expected to be between 22 and 28.0 centimeter and you can able to confirm that that is uh, true. Uh, so F2, so for you to, to get the mark for F2, then uh, it has to be within the 10%, uh, within 10% of uh, F1. So if you try to do that, 15.9 uh, minus 15.6, that is 0.3. So, of course, 0 0.3, if you look at that change, is 15.3, 0 0.3 over uh, uh, 15.9. Of course, that is a value that is less than 10%. You can able to confirm. So, if that is confirmed, so meaning that, uh, let's say, I didn't uh, score full mark for F1, but if uh, F2 meets this condition here, then I will get a mark for that particular part. So let's see our conclusion. So we are being advised that, uh, so according to their guide, is that the strain matching the results, appropriate justification within the limit of experimental accuracy. So I think uh, that is something that we did. Uh, for that part, there is uh, nothing exact. So the statement will depend on your results. That is what, and then uh, for part F, there are more uh, points here you can able to see. So carry out experiment in a dark room. If you cannot able to afford a dark room, then try to avoid direct sunlight, or alternatively, you can able to use a bright lamp. Uh, lens and object the same height. We've mentioned this. Uh, lens, object, and screen are vertical. I've uh, mentioned this, which we mentioned here to be perpendicular. You may not be able to use the uh, same wordings. Move screen uh, back and forth slowly. Uh, I think that is also something that I, I did. You can able to see on the video. Uh, place a rule on the bench. So I did this, but I didn't fix it. I mark the center of the lens on the holder. I, there's a line there that I use, but I didn't mark it. Uh, readings repeated, you can able to repeat uh, so that you can able to get, uh, so for every, uh, let's say V1, instead of just getting one value, you can get different values of V1, maybe three, then you find the average. So that is all. I'll see you in the next video where I will show you how we can able to answer this question without doing the practical. See you.